They go to him and they say, send her away. You are the only one. She's not listening to us. It's going to take you. Tell her to get out of Dodge. And Jesus simply says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The disciples want Jesus to only focus on the needs of Israel. They think, I want him all to myself. I want him to focus on our needs. Not her needs, but our needs. But then that assumed pagan Canaanite woman does something very strange. She pushes past the disciples and she kneels before Jesus. This Canaanite, this outsider, recognized in Jesus something that the disciples hadn't come to grips with yet. Jesus is the king. Not a king in this world like the other kings that ruled the land, but a king of a realm much greater than she was even capable of comprehending. It isn't until the next chapter in Matthew that Peter declares that Jesus is the Messiah. You are the king. You are the Messiah. It's, it's after this. So in the boat last week, they said, yes, you truly are the Son of God. So they've recognized that He is the Son of God, but they have yet to recognize that He is the king. And with that, Him being a king, all power and authority is His. They wanted him all for themselves. They were being selfish. They were not willing to share Jesus or to even see the needs of other people. They could only see their own needs right then. They were simply willing to determine who was in and who was out. How is it possible that this strange and crazy woman from a foreign land could have more insight into Jesus' identity than his own disciples? I mean, she is, after all, clearly an unclean outsider, a woman at that approaching Jesus. Just unheard of in those days. And let's not forget, she was an enemy of Israel. When she knelt before him, she was saying, not only are you the king, but you hold all the power. There's a connection between those who kneel before Jesus and the healings and miracles that he performs. We're told earlier in Matthew that a leper knelt before Jesus and he was made clean. A ruler knelt and asked that his daughter be healed. And she was also healed. And even at the end of the Gospel in Matthew 28, after the resurrection, Jesus appears to the disciples. And they bow down before Him. And Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth is Mine. The woman kneels before the One that she recognizes as having all the authority. Not only the One, the authority to sit on the throne of David, but also the authority to wield power over evil in this world. And I think as she's kneeling there and Jesus is looking into her face, he winks once again. Here's a woman that will not be deterred. She cannot be stopped. She claims her place in the household, but it's not a position of privilege it's not even the position of an insider. She's not saying, make me a disciple. She's not saying, may I sit at the right hand at the table. She is simply saying, Lord, you hold all the power, and my daughter needs that power. As Jesus winks, she understands, and she accepts the status of being a dog. But she claims, as she talks back to Jesus, that even the dog gets crumbs from the table. <laughs> now that statement is important. When she looks Jesus in the eye and she says, even the dogs eat the crumbs from the Master's table. It tells us that she has placed her hope in something that others have discarded. 
It also says that the son of David has so much power that there is enough power in him for the house of Israel as well as all this power left over for the rest of the world. She's not trying to derail his mission to Israel, but she is trying to broaden it to include her. She just wants a crumb because she recognizes that a crumb from the master's table is powerful enough to defeat the demon that has possessed her daughter. And what does Jesus do? He praises her faith. He praises her faith. This woman seems to understand what the members of the household of Israel have yet to understand. Jesus is not just hope for Israel but hope for the world. In the passage that immediately precedes this story, Jesus responds to the challenge from the Pharisees by reframing their dietary laws and what the boundaries are for eating food. And he says, what comes out of the mouth comes out of the heart. He says, it's not what goes in the mouth that makes one unclean. It's what comes out of the mouth. So he has told the Pharisees, y'all have it all backwards. It's not what you eat that makes you unclean. It's what's coming out of your mouth that makes you unclean. And what Jesus saw coming out of the mouth of that Canaanite woman that day was a heart of faith and a heart of desperation, a heart of need. And she professed her faith in that conversation with Jesus that day. Jesus has power enough for Israel and power enough to save her non-Israelite daughter. And she knew it. Her words demonstrate that the boundaries separating her from the house of Israel also need to be reconsidered and reframed. In her mind, I'm sure she was thinking with a faith like this, how can I possibly be deemed up clean? And I bring that message to all of us this morning. If we have faith in our hearts like a Canaanite woman, there is no reason we can't boldly go to Jesus Christ and profess our needs. And with faith that comes through our love of Jesus Christ, how could we possibly ever be unclean? I think this encounter with the Canaanite woman prepared the disciples to hear Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing. And in his act of healing, Jesus showed mercy. Mercy to this daughter, mercy to this woman, and he answered that eternal question, who exactly is entitled to mercy? The only other gospel that has this story is Mark, and it's a much shorter version. Matthew expanded this version, and I believe it was for a reason. Because I believe that Matthew remembered what he was hearing just like the day that Jesus called him. Remember, he was sitting in a tax collector's booth when Jesus said, put down your past and follow me. And he says, come on, let's go eat at your house today. And the Pharisees are standing there and they're watching. And they're all back there mumbling to themselves saying, look, this Jesus, he eats with tax collectors. He eats with sinners. And Jesus said to them, It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. You know, mercy is deliverance from judgment. It is not... Strength. It is given freely by God. Mercy 
is God not punishing us for what we deserve to be punished for? It took a while for the disciples to understand the concept of mercy. They actually had to get out in the real world without Jesus there with them before they could understand what mercy really was. All too often, Christians forget how much mercy we've been given, especially when it comes to extending mercy to others. We find ourselves quick to judge. We talked about this in Sunday school this morning. And Christians love to pick up the, the bat and swing it. They forget that the same mercy that was extended to them has been extended to everyone. We forget that we were just like the Canaanite woman in need of mercy when we found Jesus and knelt at his feet. I think Jesus winked when he was teaching a lesson that he hoped would carry through in the lives of his disciples. And with all my heart, I know that he is sitting at the right hand of the Father in heaven today, still winking when we finally understand what he's been trying to teach us too. Amen. Amen. Amen.